So then did you catch the interview with Felix and Penthouse? Penthouse. Felix and Penthouse and Pack with Rene Moxley Good. I did. Okay. Pack comes out and gives Felix a hammer and say, you got to use this in the match tonight. Okay, maybe that might be something that you'd have wanted to do in the locker room amongst yourselves in private rather than telling everybody about it ahead of time. Bayer, use this hammer. So it's a three-way match, a triple threat match for the A&P title with Felix against Dino Douche against Pockets. And Brian, normally I only watch the... I was going to say serious wrestling matches, but I only watch the serious wrestling matches or people attempting to have a serious match. I don't watch pockets because I don't dignify the one note joke that quit getting funny three years ago. But this match had the potential to be the worst match ever held in wrestling. Really? So, well, think about it. (laughs) In their own way, each of them are the drizzling shits. And they're all different ways that each of them are the drizzling shits. Plus, it's a a triple threat match. It's a three-way. Plus, it's for a fucking title that nobody cares about. So I figured this has all the makings, right? And this on a show where we're about to see Jane Cargill against Marina Schaefer. So I'm going to watch this. So here's the highlights. They double drop kicked Dino Douche to the floor and he stayed out there and sold and wandered around for two full minutes while Felix and Pockets went through a phony choreographed tumbling routine at about 100 miles an hour where nobody sold anything and it looked like a kid's TikTok video. And then Dino got back in and beat both of them up in such a boring fashion that it killed the crowd and they went to the break. Then they came back And Felix was throwing the fakest punches that I've ever seen, even worse than the previous segment. And then Penthouse and Felix tried some kind of double team on Dino. And whatever it was, everybody just kind of fell over sideways. And then Penthouse and Felix tried a double dive out of the ring on Dino. And Dino was supposed to catch both of them by the throat, like in chokeslam position. But he missed Felix, and Felix fell on the ground. So to make up for that, he went over and picked Felix up and choke slammed him through a table at ringside. And then Dino and Pockets fought, in quotation marks, up the ramp to the entranceway. Because did I mention it's no count out, no disqualification, lazy booking. Shirt on sale at jimcornette.com, Saturday, November 19th at noon Eastern. And then... Dino was going to go to choke slam pockets off the stage through a table. But Jungle Boy came out on the stage with a chair and hit Dino with it. And he dropped pockets. And then Jungle Boy ran and cross bodied Dino off the stage. And they both went through a table. They just broke a table two minutes. The, the big goof killed his own fucking bump. Can you imagine? He did it himself. He choke slammed a guy through a table two minutes before he goes through a table. He killed his own fucking bump. Could you imagine if somebody was trying to set that match up? And they said, okay, and then you choke slam him through the table, and then you two fight up the fucking ramp, and then the other guy's gonna come out and cross body you, and you're gonna go off stage through a table. The first thing the guy taking the fucking bump off the stage through a table would say is, wait a minute. Then I ain't going to put him through the fucking table because it's going to kill my fucking bump. I'm going to not only be, I'm just choke slamming him, but I'm going to go off the goddamn stage. It's going to be a big deal. We're not going to fucking kill my bump. I might get hurt doing this. How stupid would I be to choke slam a motherfucker through the, It's like, and I I don't even think I mentioned this, but in the earlier segment, what I was going to say is I know where they were going with Jeff Jarrett being coming in to be a surprise when they did the reveal that was a fucking fart in church. 
with the guy that nobody knew who the fuck he was because they justified in their mind, but then the big star comes in and they'll really go crazy. So they were thinking here, well, this may be just a choke slam through the table, but they're going to come off the stage through that table, you fucking idiots. Meanwhile, the match is still going on through all of this with all these people not even involved in it. And as they go back to the ring, Pac brings Felix the hammer again. And Felix takes it and then throws it back, won't look at it, won't use it, won't fucking deal with Pac. And then Pockets punches Felix, one punch, and knocks him out, one, two, three. The same guy Pockets earlier in the match gave a fucking DDT, spinning DDT to Felix, who landed straight on his fucking head, stuck like a fence post, and popped back up five seconds later doing moves. But one fucking punch from this buggy-whipped-armed, fucking emaciated goddamn clown one, two, three. And then here comes Pac and starts getting heat on pockets and then says, where's the fucking hammer? Because he can't find the hammer that he brought. So he goes and gets the hammer they used to ring the bell and gets back in the ring. But before he can use the bell hammer, more music plays, which sounded like Muzak in a funeral home. It wasn't exactly goddamn a Springsteen anthem. I don't know what the fuck, where they got this instrumental. And here comes a Japanese guy in a t-shirt and sweatpants. What the, f and <laughs> the announcers are trying to, oh my God, it's sh Shibuti. Shibuti, Shibuti, Shibuti. Shibata. Whatever. It's another Japanese guy dressed in t-shirt and sweatpants. Every time they bring out a surprise guy from New Japan Pro Wrestling, he's got the same haircut, wearing a t-shirt and sweatpants. And the announcers are going crazy. But then out comes Rocky Romero and Trent and Muffin Top Taylor. And then the crowd kind of starts cheering because at least they know who those people are. And they come down the fucking ramp and Pac leaves the ring and then Shibuti points at Pockets' belt and Pockets hands him a contract and a pin and he signs it and they stare at each other. There's been so much happened in the last five minutes. They've, they've made a match between two people after they've just done three angles for three other different goddamn death grudges that I've even forgot who the fuck was involved in this thing. What the fuck? <laughs> what in the God's name is going on here? Why are you laughing at me? I I'm laughing because you're not wrong. Perplexed, puzzled, bum puzzled, <laughs> verklempt. This was one of the worst episodes, if not the single worst episode of Dynamite. This was the episode I was like, I hate AEW. I don't want to watch it anymore. Shibata, you know who Shibata is. Shibata was a very talented young Japanese wrestler who worked a stiff style and ended up doing the headbutt spot and having issues with his head. Oh, wait, no, is he the guy they thought he was going to die and never wrestle again? He was that guy that in The Observer, it famously was reported that they removed his brain. <laughs> Why? What? <laughs> wait, can you do that? We talked about that, it. Wait, oh, that's, that's right. You can't do that. No, you can't remove. That's not how you fix these problems. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what caused Dave problem. <laughs> but yeah, he's a but talented no, but guy no, that's well, never been. To, if this guy's come back from the brink of grim death, I'm not trying to knock him, but he, it, they brought him out on television just wearing a goddamn parking attendance outfit. Like everybody would know. Oh my God, look, it's fucking Liberace. I don't know. What the fuck? Do you think athletes should wear a suit? Well, <laughs> I, it depends on the circumstances. Yeah, some guys look great in suits like the Hurt Business did when they're not in their gear. Or some guys look like stars without Stone Cold Steve Austin. You ever seen him in a suit in his life? He looks like a star, but these guys from New Japan, they come, and they're in a big building, and, and they're, they're not even... 
Maybe sometimes they put their name up on a fuck on the screen so people might have a clue, but you can't just see who these fucking people are, you know, instantly when they're all just dressed like goddamn schlubs that just wander in. Same expression, same haircut, same basic size. It, it, he assumes everybody knows who everybody in the world is. And... So anyway, the, 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 now we're going to get this guy against pockets. If he was somebody, would they be bringing him in and putting him with the fucking mascot? It, was it worth the plane ticket for this? Well, what the public? Uh, well, we see him as the mascot. To them, he's one of their top superstars. Well, they're not allowed to use the word superstar, are they? One of their top wrestling stars. Can they use superstars or WWE owns that, right? I think it actually in a wrestling application, I mean, you can say he's a superstar in the world of you know, women's golf or whatever, I guess. And it wouldn't be, he's a superstar in the world of women's golf. It That'd could probably, be with pockets. You don't know. Well, you never know. 